Hello and welcome. Thank you so much for clicking on this video. This is the first in a series of videos that I am producing with my friend and equal video production nerd Nico Rodriguez. We are hoping to reach out to as many friends as we have internationally as possible and interview them on what they are experiencing in their home countries regarding this pandemic that we're all living with right now. The videos will be structured with a more serious introduction, giving some research information on the infection rates and policy situation in the given country, followed by the more lighthearted interview of us speaking with our friends to see what they're experiencing firsthand. Today, we are starting with our first video, and I am going to talk to my friend Alina, who lives in Hamburg, Germany. Alina and I met in 2015 when she was an exchange student at my high school, and we haven't talked in a couple years, so I'm, I was very excited to reconnect. She's lovely. <laughs> but as I said, before we start, uh, I'm gonna give a little bit of information on what's going on in Germany. I am recording this video on April 17th, 2020, and as of Wednesday of this week, within the whole world, two million confirmed cases of COVID have been found and 130,000 deaths. And of Germany's 82 million people, they currently have 130,450 reported cases of COVID-19, as well as 3,569 deaths. The country has been applauded as one of the four best countries in regards to their flattening of the curve and their response to this infection. Another source that I looked at showed that the country already had a test produced and stocked by the time contamination really started to kick in. As of April 15th, 2020, moving forward within Germany, retailers under 8,610 square feet will be allowed to reopen April 20th, schools on May 4th, hair salons on May 4th. Individuals can only meet with one other person outside while maintaining social distance. Large events are banned through August 31st. Protective masks are recommended but not mandatory. Bars, restaurants, daycares, theaters, and cinemas will be closed for the foreseeable future. Religious gatherings will also be closed for the foreseeable future. And strict controls at the borders will remain in place for at least the next 20 days. As we know, this is a very serious pandemic and in some aspects, these are very stressful and grim times, but something that I have been holding as a guiding star right now is the fact that there is also some beauty and connection that are coming out of these times. And I think one of that, one of those pieces of connection is the omnipresence of this experience. Every single person in the world is going through this right now, including our friends internationally. So without further ado, I would like to let you watch my interview with Alina as we talk about her firsthand experience and the human side to this data. Here and I. Hello! Hey, how are you? I'm good, how are you? <laughs> I'm good, I'm great. Yeah, it's 8 p.m. for you. It's 11 a.m. for me. <laughs> <laughs> it was so sunny today. It was so nice, like yeah. the whole day. Give us a little, like, taste of what what the pandemic is like there and what you've been experiencing. Um, me and my roommate, we did the two weeks quarantine together where we just, like, went for a walk to the grocery store and that's it. Um, she was in Portugal as well, so we were like, okay, after when she got back, we did the two weeks of quarantine to check if we have any sim symptoms, which we didn't, uh, luckily. Yeah. <laughs> and... Um, now with the weather changing, everyone is like, they keep distance to each other, but with the weather changing and like not a lot of days are like this mm -hmm. here, sadly. So the people are super careful, but still outgoing. Everyone is starting to run. Like people are crazy for exercising right now, I feel like, or food and alcohol a lot. Lockdown. Oh, you are on real lockdown, lockdown. Mm -hmm. Oh, we're not yet. I hope mm -hmm. that will come, though, because I feel like that's the only thing to um, stop it from going on. That's interesting. Mm -hmm. So you can't have crowds of people in public, but you're not on technical lockdown. No. So basically, 
you're not allowed to meet outside with more than one person mm. just for a walk though you're not supposed to like do picnics and stuff that's not allowed as well um but if you are babysitting i think that's another thing i feel like it's quite it's like in a gray zone maybe mm. and um if you have people over um you could pay as well like if the police catches you that's not good as well <laughs> people are um doing home office all the time and they have the kids there because the school oh yeah the school closed I feel so sorry for other people with kids right now because as you might have seen it's not usual to have a house just for yourself like you do because mm-hmm. um, it's like more apartment living here city mm-hmm. and stuff and I would go crazy if I have my kids running around an apartment no backyard mm-hmm. there are um, security guards in front of grocery stores with um, lines so you have to wait um not everyone is wearing masks, but they're starting to. What is, like, the craziest thing you've seen since this started? Um, mm, there are a couple. So, um, the park, like, by our neighborhood, um, I was there with my roommate, and there was like those two ladies and they were holding a line in between each other to keep the distance. <laughs> that was crazy. Or the we were just sitting on a bench in the sun and there was the police officer on his motorcycle and he um, stopped a group of three people to ask for their IDs because you're only supposed to meet with one other person. Mm -hmm. And if you're in a group of more than that, you could either um, pay, I guess, what is it, 250 euros? I'm not sure, but something about that. So it's quite expensive. And they stopped them to ask for their IDs. And I think that was pretty insane because, like, as you know, we live, like, in such a free states and, like, countries and it was never a problem to meet up with a, like with friends when it's good weather out and just a police officer asking you for your ID to check if you're in the same, um, if you live in the same like house. That was quite insane. Insane. Like for me, like in chats, like um, friends of mine, they're sending toilet paper pictures. Be like, I feel so guilty walking around with my toilet paper right now, but I don't have any at home. And like when I buy it, I'm like, I'm sorry, I'm not like bunkering toilet paper. I just <laughs> need it. I don't. I'm run out of toilet paper. <laughs> and my it's like I, one friend of mine he lives in the same street, and he ran out of toilet paper, and he called us. He's like, do you guys have still some toilet paper? And we just put on the wall of toilet paper down <laughs> out of the window. The last question I want to ask you is, what have you been doing to keep yourself occupied during quarantine? Oh my gosh. So, um, I've, what have I been doing? Nothing, basically. <laughs> I just changed my major, so I don't have anything to do for university. I, um, I've been reading, I think, watching Netflix all day long, Skyping with friends. Um, I did some art projects. I'm on for years so i'm trying to get those done it's like the world this is the the land and this is the water and then i do like little i don't know that is drawings. beautiful thank you it's but so it takes me so long and i still have so much to go i can imagine yeah the detail on that yeah it's like it's super tiring after a while i was I'm planning on making soap, like you know how you can put them in like hard shapes and stuff. Like going out for a walk, grocery shopping, and that's it. I think the most exciting part is probably walking around. We did a lot of cleaning. <laughs> um, we do day drinking, um, watching people walking by, and that's quite interesting. <laughs> <laughs> At least you know, it makes it feel a little less isolated. Yeah. <laughs> I've spent quite a few days just sitting with the garage open watching people walk by because it yeah. makes me feel connected <laughs> to some degree. It's quite funny down there. There's a, a Greek restaurant right by the corner. Mm-hmm. And before the um, like 
maybe three weeks ago or something they were still not open but just for like the people who come there every day to drink mm. um they were open and there was always a bench outside then they were just like having beers all the time it's such a big crowd like five six people or something and then they closed obviously or like maybe that was the owner and he was like we can't do that anymore and now they're just standing in front of the um <laughs> one of the store in the sun because the sun shines there directly on the on the on the street and they're standing there two meters apart and that's <laughs> so not quite legal but okay but they're getting away with it it sounds like i'm wondering when the police will stop by and separate them <laughs> you'll get a good view you get some drama to watch yeah i hope so Juicy. I talk about this stuff for so long every day, I start to get really down and like stressed I don't out. Know why. It's insane. That's why I've been drinking some wine to keep myself. No. <laughs> <laughs> That's that. There you go. Quarantine party. Turn into a party. Yes, we're current. <laughs> chin chin.